Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllerieTutors.com and welcome to this video on esters. So in this video we're going to be looking at how we make them, how we name them, hydrolysis of them as well, both acid and base hydrolysis, and we're also going to look at um, their uses as well. So esters are a group of chemicals that have uh, very distinctive smells, um, both good and bad. Uh, and we'll look at the uses of them later on because they're incredibly useful chemicals. But firstly, we need to know how we're going to make them. And we make them in a really simple way. We just use a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. And I've drawn them up here and I've actually colour coded them. So all the acids will be in blue and all the alcohols will be in red. So you can see really easily where each bit has come from. So um, we're going to draw our ester and we're going to start with the carboxylic acid bit first. And you can see here, there's our carboxylic acid. So we're going to put in, we're going to draw in our carboxylic acid or the front bit of it. So this bit is actually, um, this bit is actually two carbons. So this is ethanoic acid, which is this one here. And we're going to react this with methanol, which is our alcohol here. And you can see what I've done is I've actually uh, stopped short of the hydrogen, of adding the hydrogen here. And this hydrogen will be used to form water as one of the byproducts along with the OH from the alcohol, which would combine to form water. So what's left is basically the methyl part of the alcohol. Uh, and this adds on to the oxygen at the bottom here. So we're going to add that onto there. So there's the methyl group. And again, I've drawn that in red to show that that's come from the actual alcohol that we used. Um, and the two bits which we haven't looked at yet, like I say, is the hydrogen and the OH. So then they would go to form your water as your product as well. Okay, uh, this thing would need a, a catalyst for it to happen. Uh, normally it's sulfuric acid and it's concentrated. So we're going to put conk H2SO4 catalyst. Uh, and what this does is actually quite clever. It actually helps to uh, dehydrate or remove the water that's on the right hand side. thus forcing equilibrium to the right hand side. Uh, and again, this reaction is actually in equilibrium. So we're going to put our equilibrium arrow there as well to show that. Okay. Uh, and naming these are really important. So um, they're a bit weird. You've got to name them back to front. So you name the alcohol bit first, then you name the acid bit second. So what I've done in this one here, I've used the same colours and I've split up the molecule. One uh, showing the uh, carboxylic acid bit and the other one showing the alcohol bit. You can see here on this molecule, the blue box shows us the carboxylic acid bit and the red box shows us the alcohol part. And so when we name them, we actually name the alcohol bit first. So the alcohol in this case, uh, you can see we've got one carbon. So that's just going to be methyl. There you go. Uh, and then the blue bit, you can see we've got three carbons there. So then three carbons tell us that it's got to be uh, propane. So this is propanoate. And this is how we name them. So methyl propanoate. And they always end in that bit at the end there, O8 at the end. So you just say, find out how many carbons you've got uh, in each side. Okay, so let's do another one. And um, now this one is has the same MR. All I've done is I've used a different alcohol and a different carboxylic acid. But crucially, same number of carbons and hydrogen. So the molecular formula will actually be the same as the one we've done there. But the actual name of it is going to be different. So we can see here, we're going to uh, split it up again into the different parts. So we're going to take the alcohol bit first. So in this molecule on the right, the alcohol bit is actually this bit here. There's our alcohol. And then our acid bit is with all the oxygen done. So this is going to be the acid part here. So there it is. Okay, so again, when we name it, we've got to start with the alcohol bit first. That's the bit on the right hand side. You can see that we have three carbons there this time. So this is going to be propyl. There you go. So propyl, and then we've got our carboxylic acid bit. There's one carbon there. So this is going to be a meth. So this is going to be propyl methanoate. So we're going to put that on there. There you go. Now you can see, same uh, molecular formula, 
um, but we've arranged it differently, and the name of it is completely different as well. This one's propyl methanoate, this one's methyl propanoate. So make sure that you're naming them correctly, that's really, really important. Okay, and hydrolyzing them. So hydrolysis is a really good way of breaking up esters. It's effectively just going backwards. So as this one is called esterification, because we're forming the ester, here we've got the ester and we're going to get back uh, our products, uh, our reactants, sorry, that we used uh, before. This is especially the case with acids, slightly different for alkalis or base hydrolysis, which I'll come into in a minute. So the acid uh, hydrolysis is basically using water to split up an ester. That's what hydrolysis means. So um, we're going to use an acid catalyst as a as a um, a way of helping us to produce this. So you can see here, here we've got our ester, uh, and again we're going to split it up. We're going to find out which bit is the acid and which bits the um, which bits come from the alcohol. So you can see here, this bit has come from the acid, and the red bit has come from the alcohol. So this bit here. So put that there. Okay, so when we're writing our products, we just need to know exactly what our alcohol and acid is. So in this case, our acid is going to be um, this one, which is ethanoic acid, because we've got two carbons. So we're going to put, let's draw ethanoic acid out. Okay, uh, and the other bit is our alcohol. So our alcohol is actually this one here. This is just meth on the end there, so that's just going to be methanol. So let's quickly add our molecules in there. There you go. And that's it. That's acid hydrolysis. So this is a reversible reaction, so it will go backwards and forwards, because uh, effectively it is just esterification. Okay, and um, coming on to the next one, which is actually base hydrolysis. Now, the main difference with this is actually this one is not reversible. This one only goes one way. So we're going to take our ester, again, the same ester as we had before, but this time we're going to react it with sodium hydroxide. Now, when we do base hydrolysis, we actually get a salt. Um, depending on the metal that we have here, in this case, it's going to be a sodium salt, uh, but it could be a potassium salt, lithium salt, etc. depending on the um, metal that we're using as part of our base or our alkali. So uh, we're going to draw our product here, and you can see, Again, we have the acid bit and we have the base bit. So we're going to, again, split this up. So it's just the same as before. There's our acid part. And there's our alcohol bit that's come from there. So, But the difference is, obviously, we're going to form our acid salt. So we're just going to put this here. So this is our... There's the hydrogens on there. C, double bond O. Uh, and then what we have down here is we have the O minus, but the sodium from here now attaches itself onto there. So we form a salt. And this is called sodium ethanoate. So very, very similar in terms of the end, except instead of this bit, we have a metal instead. So it's called sodium ethanoate. Uh, and then our other product here, uh, effectively the OH from the sodium hydroxide, adds itself onto the end here to form uh, methanol, so you get your alcohol back again. So I'll just put that there, CH3OH. So in this case, we form methanol. So all the molecules are all catered for. Uh, and we do both of these under reflux conditions, volatile liquids, uh, you don't want to heat them up just in a normal beaker. Okay, and just coming on to the uh, last bit, which is their uses. Now, esters are really useful in things like perfumes and aftershaves. Um, they are quite volatile, which means they evaporate quite readily. So when you put them onto your face, uh, the heat coming from your face actually uh, helps to evaporate them and spread the nice fragrant smell around the room. So very, very nice. Uh, food additives, uh, they're very useful in things like um, fizzy drinks and additives to like cakes and biscuits and other types of foods. Uh, they are relatively soluble. Uh, which makes them useful so they won't uh, separate out into the food because they can hydrogen bond with water. So uh, that makes them pretty useful and they also can enhance flavour as well, so artificial flavourings. Okay, um, glues as well, uh, again for the same reason. Um, glues have the solvent and ester based solvent in them. Uh, when you spread the glue, the solvent then evaporates away from it, which is the ester, uh, and leaves behind the um, very hard plasticky. 
uh, glue that's left behind that effectively sticks things together. So that smell when you get glue that's, or the smell of glue when it's been setting is actually an ester that's been, uh, well, it could be an ester that's actually been produced. And the last one is uh, plasticizers. Uh, plasticizers are chemicals which are used to soften uh, plastics. So you might get something like PVC, which is in a drain pipe, is really, really hard and tough. Uh, but if we add a plasticizer to that, we can make it softer. Uh, same plastic, um, and that could be used to make bouncy castles, for example. So again, really, really useful chemicals. And actually, your world would be a very, very different place if you didn't have esters in them. And you've probably eaten some this um, this morning as well. So uh, there you go. Make sure you know how to make them. Your nomenclature is really, really important. Hydrolysis, a lot of people forget. Make sure you know that. And actually, um, that the uh, base hydrolysis is actually... Um, not reversible, uh, and just a quick acknowledgement to the uses as well. There you go. That's it. Bye-bye.